Tana, did you hear about the national platform of Eastern Par Partnership, where is lots of NGO and they work in the field of democracy and there's few groups inside it, but I didn't saw a group of culture there. Uh, why there is no culture and why you are not there? Your program and you personally? That's, uh, you should inform me better about that. I, I, I was not aware. So in Ukraine, you say, there is a national platform. Yes. Uh, that that uh, groups, uh, NGOs. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it's, uh, I will have to talk with my team because uh, that's one of my disadvantages that I'm a little bit um, uh, uh, sorry about it that uh, I do not speak Russian or Ukrainian, which makes that I cannot read what is, uh, you know, even in the internet, what is not translated into English. I am not, not getting aware of it because if there is such an initiative, we should absolutely uh, be part of such, a, I mean, be. Ukrainian culture uh, actors and NGOs should be part of, of, of that. Um, I, I mean, in that sense, I cannot say anything about the, the, the platform itself. I, I, I know that there are many discussions and I know that it is one of the topics uh, connected to um, you know, what is, what, 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 what is, what is uh, uh, an appropriate way of, of defending and of uh, strengthening Ukrainian culture where for me for instance it's very important that it's not an ethnically related definition of culture meaning that Ukrainian culture is only what is uh, ethnically Ukrainian but that uh, Ukrainian culture uh, is, 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 is understood as an inclusive uh, understanding of all possible uh, cultures that are represented in the country which you know, includes uh, on the one side, Russian language as, as much as Ukrainian language, but there are many other. In the uh, in the west of Ukraine, you have there are ties to Poland, there are ties to uh, Ukraine. I think there are ties to even to, to Romania. I know that there are. Uh, I mean, the, the Crimean Tatars. We had uh, really by by chance the privilege to do a workshop on Crimea in November two thousand thirteen. Uh, where we, always, we also had Crimean Tatars being present at that workshop and I could have never managed that it was kind of the last opportunity to do such an event in, in, in on Crimea and God knows when we will have another chance again to go back there with such an event. But uh, I mean, you, 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 wherever you go in this country, you see how, how multicultural the country is. I mean, almost everybody is bilingual. Uh, there are many countries uh, where this is not a fact. I mean, I'm coming from Switzerland where we have two, three, even four languages in the country. So we are used to, 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 to people that are multilingual, but um, the, the French speak French and nothing else, the British speak English and nothing else. And I mean, to see that like a big country like uh, Ukraine is so strongly multicultural and multilingual, this is something it sh that should be understood as, as an asset, as a strength of the country, and not as something, oh, we have to protect the Ukrainian against the Russians, or, which, which creates division instead of unity and it, which weakens everybody instead of strengthening and taking advantage of this, of this beautiful fact to be a, a multicultural uh, country. By the way, in brackets, uh, I was not aware of that, but I had the opportunity last year at the conference to listen to a, a United Nations expert from an organization that is called Habitat, which is based in Nigeria who looked at the demographic development of the capitals of the Eastern Partnership countries. And he could prove that the times when the cities were vibrant centers of life with a huge impact and influence on the whole region were when they were very, very multicultural. And that the development of the last 20 years led to a complete separation of ethnicities, like Yerevan became a pure Armenian city, Baku is a pure uh, Azeri city, Georgia is a pure Georgian city, where before they were a mix of everybody and that they lost dynamics and they lost influence and impact by, by having becoming uh, monocultural instead of being multicultural. So there is even the proof that uh, multicultural uh, urban centers uh, are much stronger in any terms of life, of economy, of 
because of, 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 of the enrichment that comes through different cultures meeting and by that inspiring each other, even, even if there is a competition among them, but if it's not a dividing competition, if it's not an aggressive competition, it's inspiring and makes everybody stronger, instead of if all are the same, it gets like boring. I mean, there is no tension anymore, there is no creativity anymore. And so uh, I think that's... Uh, and now I just said that in brackets because I do not know what this national platform, what, 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 what uh, concept or aspect this national platform is having and what it is about, but uh, you know, if, if culture people would join such a platform, that's, that's the kind of ideas that I would like them to promote uh, within such a platform. But uh, we, will, we will research that and I will see to, to, better, I will seek to better understand. <laughs>